The following scenario is intended to promote reflection and discussion about issues, challenges and opportunities in planning goals of care collaboratively with families. As you watch the segment, consider the following questions. What is happening? What issues does it raise? What emotions come to your awareness? What implications does it have for how we practice? Dad died about 10 years ago, and Mum has lived alone at home since then. Mum's 75. She loves that old house. All us kids were born there. That's where she wants to be when her time comes to be with the ancestors. She doesn't want to be hundreds of miles away in a noisy hospital with a bunch of strangers around her. She wants to be at home with family, friends and elders. Those are her wishes and I want to honour those wishes. Grandma told me that she wants to be at home when the end comes. But that's almost impossible. How will I look after her? I mean, I work full time. I've got children to look after. I can't be there all the time for her. I know I'm going to be expected to do most of the caregiving because I live closest to her. As much as I'd like to help, I just can't. But maybe there are solutions that we can work out together as a family. I understand what my sister is saying. I want to help too, but I live almost an hour away from grandma's. You know, the roads aren't good this time of year with the snowstorms and all. I don't know how much help I can be but I'll do my best. Like my sister says, maybe we can work out something with family, and maybe even friends. I believe that we as caregivers should do everything possible to fulfill the last wishes of our patients. In Helen McKenzie's case, there are a number of things that need to be addressed. For instance, her condition requires constant monitoring for her pain meds. Helen's home is a remote community and is a one-hour drive on bad rural roads to a small hospital with a doctor. I know Helen's family wants to do what's best for her, but it's not an easy decision. There's so much to consider. Everyone wants the best for Helen, but there's a lot to consider. Things like her proximity to health care. What type of care is available? What's her family's ability to care for her at home? And what are the rigors and logistics of transferring Helen back home? Can Helen physically endure a transfer? In order to facilitate these discussions, I often can. employ the traditional I talking circle. This gives everyone an opportunity to speak. I start by passing the talking stone or feather to the person on my left. This well, person may I mean, accept and speak, or they may pass it to the next person. This helps to honour each person's input. For first-timers, I explain this process and how it works. As each person speaks, others can write down their questions for discussion later. I just know that Mother wants to be home for her last days. I just never considered how difficult the trip home would be, or how much care she requires. I don't know what to do now. I just want to... I mean, if it were me, I know I'd want to be home. I was thinking that there's lots of family and friends who live near Grandma's house who could help. Some more than others, but it should all add up. I could probably talk to them and organize something. I'll do what I can. I could help Danny organizing the family. But mostly I'm worried about the health care facilities in case something happens. What happens if we need help? Helen needs care, but it is possible to provide what she needs in a community setting with some advanced planning. I talked to the local nurse at the nursing station and they can provide 24-hour pain management. They don't call 24 hours a day. The nurses are aware of Helen's situation and are willing to do what is necessary to support her in her home through this time. 
There are details to work out, but they're manageable if the family is willing to take some training and provide some of the care that the nurses are not able to deliver. Thank you. Jennifer is right about the care needed, and it is easier to provide in a hospital. And I understand the family's concern about Helen's wishes to be at home. Another possibility is the smaller hospital, which is closer to home. Just before we came to the meeting, Helen's doctor told me that the hospital near Danny's home has agreed to care for Helen. The hospital is an hour away from her home, so friends and family and even elders could arrange to visit her. This might be worth discussing as another possible solution. It's important to make sure that the lines of communication are maintained. Sometimes several meetings with the family are needed to sort out the choices and the situation. As facilitators or healthcare professionals, we need to do some homework before we arrive at the meetings. We need to address the issues that face families with information that is useful in helping them make choices that are the best for them and their loved one. Planning goals of care in rural and remote settings requires a willingness to explore a range of options and a thorough mapping of the available system of community resources. The preferred or default option from a healthcare delivery system perspective will not always be the desired or sought out option from a patient or family perspective. This can be further complicated by an Aboriginal person's strong desire to be near the land and close to family when it comes close to the time to join the ancestors. Working successfully with Aboriginal families in remote settings requires flexibility creativity, patience, and a willingness to engage a broad range of family and community resources.